Hey there everyone, so today as I thought it has been freaking ages since I made my last video What I'll do is I'm just going to do a giant live update because I've been to an absolute ton of gigs And making a video for each one would just be kind of overdrawn and a little bit silly really But anyway this video is probably going to be quite long so I'll leave a link to um, each band I speak about in the description box and I'll list them out now To begin with I'm going to speak about El Doom and the Born Electric Truck Fighters and Quellatoc at the Electric Ballroom then it's going to be Empress, Brutality Will Prevail, uh, Turbo Wolf, and Cantabats at the Coco. After that, it's Feed the Rhino and the Defiled at Brixton Academy, followed by Floods and the Palm Reader at the Rattlesnake. After that, the most recent one, which was Shattered Skies, Visions, and the Algorithm at Surya. Right, to begin with, El Doom and the Born Electric were opening the show for Cavellatuck at the Ballroom. And I must admit, it was a really kind of odd, like, strange support slot. They played this really strange progressive rock set that included some very subtle kind of western blues and folk influence. Despite the rather cool sound, I was very much torn on the performance. They all dressed with kind of like spaghetti western gunslinging cowboy outfit kind of style, which I thought was really cool personally. Also, the front man was dancing in very much that kind of era and vein, but the sheer clumsiness of it just really killed it for me. For example, there were moments where the front man kind of like would lean the mics down one way, then let go of it and it'd swing back, but he'd overshoot it and it'd fall straight into the, like, you know, one of the guitarists or something. And this all wasn't helped by the front man also telling some rather cringeworthy jokes, to be honest. And I kind of wish I enjoyed it more, but I just didn't. Next up was Truck Fires. They are a stoner rock trio with some somewhat cool atmosphere for sure and um, their guitar tone and the riffs were really great and gave off a certain effect that filled out all of the ballroom which was really cool. Their guitarist was pretty much one of the more energetic people I've ever seen on the stage. I'm pretty sure he's replaced his shins with pogo sticks at this point because I swear to god he did not stop jumping the entire set. Ultimately, although I didn't know their music or anything, I did enjoy their set despite it being very torn down and basic. They played tightly and with a fair amount of energy. Nice pedal stanzies, I enjoyed it. To close the night, of course, was Kvelatuk. I have liked them for a fair while, but until now, haven't actually seen a headline show from them. I had saw, seen them play a set of download, as I may have mentioned before on the channel somewhere in a video. But anyway, from the word go, they pretty much played quite tight and energetically too. It's always really cool seeing three guitars and a bass play on stage. They had a very nice chemistry between each other. The front man was, I must admit, disappointingly static, but my biggest gripe with their set was easily the set list. Normally, I would never score a band down for set list choices. But about 40% of the set was new material, which hadn't even been released at the time. And I will make an exception for this case, because really that's just... Nobody wants to hear songs they haven't heard from a band they like, you know? However, I can only ever be so angry at Kvelatuk because I love them. Also, their black metal infused rock and roll riffs create an absolute riot of a show every time. Plus, the front man came on stage with an owl on his head, which I thought was pretty damn cool. The next show was actually the very next day, and to kick open the show was Empress. Sadly, the room was still filling out because for some strange reason, a nightclub at the end of the night. But either way, it was opening very early. Doors were at 6, and the first band on were at 6.15. This was on a Friday night, so after people are getting back from work, maybe college, whatever. But regardless, sonically, Empress were very impressive. They had a rather huge, heavy progressive metal feel to their set. I did feel like it was a little bit one-dimensional at times, but it still sounded like really impressive. They played tight. I didn't feel like it was the most original thing on the planet, but it was well written to a certain degree. It's just not a style I'm personally that attuned with. And also, as far as performance goes, I mean, they were all fairly kinetic. It wasn't too static, and they were all headbanging, moving around, stuff like that. The front man sort of warmed up as he got more and more into the set, but it wasn't the best thing I'd seen by a long shot. Brutality Will Prevail are very much a band that are really the epitome of something that I personally can't stand, to be quite honest. The whole, like, tough guy, macho, hardcore scene, it just kind of annoys me, to be honest. And quite a lot, but regardless, it was very slow, beat-downy, breakdowny, low-end kind of hardcore really. Personally, sonically I found it pretty dull, but it's just not my sort of thing, so I'll judge it by live performance because that's what's important on a stage. I can't really criticise their energy because they did have a fair amount of energy, the front man sort of running around punching the air, and, and at moments it looked like he was kind of out of time and a little bit awkward on stage, but I can't really knock a dude who spent most of his time tending to his fans and going down in the crowd, so fair play to him. Having said that, it did sound like at moments he was ridiculously out of breath, not even finishing his sentences at points, and also 
his, he sort of missed what sounded like a lot of his lyrics. Obviously, I don't listen to bands, so I don't know for sure, but regardless, it certainly sounded like it. As far as the rest of the stage went, the guitarist looked pretty bored, the bassist was sort of wandering around a bit, the drummer looked fairly into it, which is kind of a saving grace. But ultimately, I can't say it was my thing. Performance was okay, but a bit patchy. On the total opposite side of the spectrum, Turbo Wolf. A band that mixes such a ridiculous mix of influences, I would have thought it to be impossible to display through clothes. However, the front man tonight proved me wrong. He came on in this very, very sort of glam rock, glittery, like, sweatshirt, I guess. I don't even know what it really was, but regardless. But regardless, the band plays a mix of stoner, psychedelic, and punk rock. It's sonically, it's very fun, very painful, energetic. It has a strong kind of rock and roll feel and vibe to it. But I would be lying if I said it was only interesting sonically. Visually, watching each member put an awesome amount of energy in and seeing the frontman dance in such a strange way was really cool. They also definitely tended to the crown very well, kind of doing a lot of cliche things to a certain degree, but with the frontman's own flair on it. He reminds me of quite a few people, but I can only really think of Frank Zappa for some reason. He looks like him quite a lot, to be fair. But regardless, he got them to chant ridiculous things, clap, and move about, so that was all good. Now, for a headline set, I can't believe I'm saying this, but Cans Bats came on at 8pm. That is ridiculously early for a headline set. It was so strange seeing them start this early, to be honest. I don't think most people had woken up at this point, really. But regardless, they came out in full force, slamming out the classics and a bunch of new tracks. The riff-based hardcore band stormed through about 20 songs, which is a ridiculous amount considering their set length as well. And they pretty much played all these songs with a force of a steamroller, tons of energy. Very, very likeable frontman Liam. He's just such a dude. He kind of runs about everywhere. And whenever he speaks, I just feel like I could kind of sit down and chat to him quite happily. They played a very loose set, which admittedly wasn't the most polished thing I'd seen, but made up for it with the sheer amount of banter and energy. I love watching each band perform. They all have kind of their own personalities to a certain degree. However, I'll say there's never much of a change of pace in a Cancer Bats set. It feels a little bit one-dimensional, again, on the performance side, but I can't knock it because it's one-dimensional in a good way to a certain degree. It's very simple, very fun, and you can just move about and shout lyrics to it. And again, as I may have said before, there ain't no party like a Cancer Bats party. The following week, I had a bit of a strange Sunday. I saw half of the Eager Tour and half of a free show at the Rattlesnake in the same day. To kick off my Sunday was Feed the Rhino, and to put it simply, they are still one of the best live upcoming hardcore bands, and I feel like the lack of the crowd's enthusiasm meant the frontman Lee was a little bit kinder to the audience as these weren't his regular fans, I guess. And he was just kind of occasionally going down to the audience and running around like a lunatic, whereas normally he's shouting at the crowd to murder each other, so he was a bit kinder, to say the least. I will say, though, the noisy rock and roll influenced hardcore mob certainly suffered a great deal from pretty poor sound and many, many confused faces in the crowd, but I'll say they looked right at home on such a large stage, running rampant and playing with almost worrying precision, really. Having said that, I, they were not as good as I have seen them before, which is a first, but then again, it was a very different setting, something new to them, I'm sure, and something I would imagine they will get used to because they're getting pretty freaking big. The Defiled were next up, and they certainly have a fairly similar approach to Feed the Rhino on the live front in the, in the sense that kinetic energy generally means good. So as a result, they were running around like lunatics, keyboardists, sort of, spinning his keyboard while it's on his stand around his arm, which is always a strange thing to watch, but it fits him very well on a defiled stage, to be fair. The new features for these guys in production include some sort of lights in the, with, in the form of their logo, which was really, really cool, and then um, they had a friend who, or I would only guess to be a friend, really, who came on, sort of did some ballerina dancing around, and then eventually gets executed by Plague Doctors. I've seen them before, and their metalcore sound mix of these industrial simps always makes a connection with the crowd live, and now they have a very fitting live show to kind of go with it, not to mention the crowd support, so all in all, a great set from the default. After this, admittedly, I caught about half of Gojira's set, but to be honest, I don't want to judge them from that, because I've heard such incredible things about Gojira on a live front, and I felt like they were getting better towards the end of the half I saw, so I didn't really want to make any comments on them now anyway. So pretty much after that, I headed out to the next venue to see a free gig in which Palm Reader were playing. As I got to the Rattlesnakes, I expected Floods to be finishing as I got there quite late. However, it was clearly delayed and they had only just started as I entered. And after a few songs, they kind of mentioned that it was their last show ever. But honestly, I can't say they will be missed because they played with such little enthusiasm it was almost depressing watching them. The banter was pretty funny at moments, but they spent so much time just dicking about and not actually playing any songs. They must have spent like at least a third of the set just talking, deciding what song they're going to play next and stuff like that. 
it was very unprofessional and I'm not saying you have to be incredibly professional to be good but it was unprofessional in a bad way. They had a very metalcore sound, which I'd kind of heard before as well, so sonically it wasn't that interesting either. They didn't play necessarily sloppily, I'd say, but very middle of the road, it wasn't particularly tight. On the complete polar opposite of the spectrum was Palm Reader. From the word go, it was like a storm had been whipped up and was just ripping pieces out of the venue. They played with deadly precision, and their front man was up in everyone's face, just screaming his brains out. I honestly love watching Palm Reader play, I've only seen him once before this, but it's just bodies flying everywhere, and I'm not even talking about the crowd, pretty much no one in the crowd was moving, but I'm literally just talking about the band. And unfortunately, like I said, there was a bit of a lukewarm crowd that were watching them both times, but I will say their debut album is coming out and I expect big things from them. They played almost entirely stuff from their debut and it is sounding very solid. And quite honestly, as much as I did want to hear some more stuff from the EP, I can't blame them from the, for this decision, unlike Velatark purely for the reason that if you're a band that's only released an EP, you're going to want your more recent and stuff you believe to be stronger to represent you when you're playing to people who don't know you. Plus, regardless, they still played two out of four songs from the EP. Like I said, it's only a personal EP, but regardless, the EP songs incited a few mic grabs and stuff like that. Also, the world's smallest mosh pit. So I thought, once again, the band's riff-based, technical-edged hardcore was hard-hitting, well-written, and so freaking energetic. This is the kind of band I feel a little bit sorry for, I must admit, because they are literally killing it at every single show they go to, yet no one seems to want to watch them. If you guys get a chance to go see Palm Reader, please do, they're fantastic. Finally, and most recently, I went down to Surya to catch the algorithm and opening the show was Shattered Skies. They were a straight up prog metal band and this was their first show in London. They were from Ireland. And I can say straight away that their sound is just far too big for a stage this small. There might have been, I don't know, like 50 people in the audience, if that, when they came on. And you could just tell the speakers were booming with so much energy from just this monstrous sound they were carrying. And you could really imagine it filling up, quite honestly, any venue right up to, say, Brixton Academy and places as big as that. However, I do wish that the um, uh, performance was up to the same standard. They played a fairly tight but very static set. The front man had a fair bit of personality and flair to him, and it was enjoyable, but the whole time nothing really happened regardless. But regardless, keep an eye on these guys. This was only their first London show, like I said, so hopefully big things to come from, even if it's not necessarily my cup of tea. Next up was Visions. They were a progressive and very experimental metal band in, from what I could tell, a very similar vein to Sick. They played an impressively tight set and their sound was very sporadic and hard hitting. Performance wise, they had nice energy about them and I really enjoyed watching the front man, but the rest of the band just kind of stood there and headbangs. So nothing necessarily overly impressive, but for sure someone to keep an eye out. Plus one of their guitarists just looked ridiculously young and he was so talented for how young he was. And to finish off the night, The Algorithm. He will always be the kind of dude that I think is going to be a lot better live once he gets bigger production, perhaps a couple more members and a larger crowd to play to as well. Tonight, unfortunately, he did have some technical difficulties and I feel like he put a better set on than The Black Heart. You could tell he sort of looked more at home on stage and also definitely fed off the crowd's energy a lot. I will say I do not see the point in playing a song without Mike on drums for the intro. He does it at every show and I just think it feels kind of pointless and unimpressive. Also, I personally think Mike adds a lot to the show to look at. Having said that though, I do think the algorithm is making the right choices. He recently announced he's getting a guitarist for live shows, which is definitely a good choice. But regardless, like I said before, it was fun. The crowd definitely went for it a bit more this time around. And I mean, I just think we should support him because he's a phenomenal artist making very, very unique music. And his sound on like, you know, in a live setting played that loud is always very impressive and fun. So despite it being their last set, I felt floods were pretty goddamn poor and only warrant of a 2.5. El Doom and the Born Electric only warrant a slightly higher score for their slightly cringeworthy and awkward sloppy stage show, 3.5 to a 4. Brutality will prevail, despite it not being my thing, it certainly had some energy about it, but having said that, it was still a little bit of an average run-of-the-mill performance with some sloppiness in there, 4.5 to a 5. Shattered Skies, impressive sound, work on the performance, 5. Empress for their pretty damn monstrous sound, 5.5. Visions, I personally think, warrant a 6 for their very impressive sound, impressive musicianship, and slightly nice energy. The Algorithm, for he's just plain fun set, warrants a 6. Truck Fighters for their super stonery, psychedelic sound that really filled out the ballroom and entertained me a fair deal, 6.5. 
For Kvelatuk, who I think should have played a hell of a lot more of stuff that the crowd knew, 6.5 to a 7. Feed the Rhinos smashing Brixton Academy, despite the kind of lukewarm reception, a 7. The Defiled, also playing Brixton Academy and smashing it, warrant a 7 too. Both Cantabats and Turbowolf, I felt, despite the fact put on a very different performances compared to each other, they both were as good as each other at 7.5. And finally, for my money, the absolute kings of this giant live review update thing. Palm Reader get an 8 to an 8.5 for their ridiculously energetic and tight set. Please make sure to let me know which gigs you've been to since I last reviewed a video. Let me know how it went, what you thought the bands had played, if you discovered anyone awesome. Also, if you've seen any of these bands listed, let me know what you think or what you thought. And remember, go to live shows because live shows are freaking awesome. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to like, comment and subscribe and I'll catch you guys and gals later.